In this video I'm going to show how I built a maglev train to go around my Christmas tree. It took several prototypes to get this to work, but the basic idea is that the car floats above a magnetic track through repulsion, and some sort of rail keeps it from veering off to the left or right because magnetic repulsion is inherently unstable. I found that having a car with long legs that straddle a monorail track with a single set of magnets worked best. The longer these legs were, the more stable and smooth the train would run. Also, the length of the car mattered a lot for stability. A relatively short car would tend to be unstable in pitch and either do a backflip or nose over, whereas a longer car would behave much better. I built a round track prototype based on that idea, which would also allow me to see how the floating train handled going around a curved surface since that's what I'd be doing with the final version. The deep wells in the track support were meant to house electromagnets underneath the track. I was pretty happy with the results so far. The car had no problem going around a curve, and the friction was definitely lower than a vehicle with wheels, even though the legs of the car would rub against the track occasionally. That covers car support, now I needed to figure out propulsion. I wound up this electromagnet that has about 200 turns of wire around a quarter inch steel bolt, and pulls around 6 amps at 24 volts. It's buried snugly in the track support, and the track is placed on top. It definitely has a noticeable effect when it's powered up, but it doesn't seem to do much more than bob the car up and down slightly. Between the thickness of the track and the distance to the car's magnet, I think it's just too far away to be effective at all. I changed the design to an air cord coil that sat above the track, but would still clear the car magnet by about a millimeter. Having the coil this close should make it a lot more effective. Much better. A well-timed pulse can move the car about halfway around the track, so four coils should be more than enough to keep the rotation going smoothly. I also added this ring in the center of the track to mount the optical sensors that will activate the coils. The optical sensor scheme is the same one I used in my ball accelerator videos. The circuit consists of the coil and a flyback diode connected to 24 volts. An N-channel MOSFET is connected between the low side of the coil and ground, then the gate is pulled up to 12 volts with a resistor divider. The resistor divider is necessary because the supply voltage is larger than the maximum gate voltage of 20 volts. An infrared phototransistor is connected between the gate pin and ground, and an infrared LED is connected to the supply voltage with a 1K resistor. The LED shines on the phototransistor, causing it to pull the gate down to 0 volt, shutting off the MOSFET. When the beam of infrared light is broken by a solid object, the phototransistor is no longer conducting, so the gate is pulled back up to 12 volts, causing the MOSFET to conduct and energize the coil. Here's an example of one of these sensors in action. To trip the optical sensors, I glued a small tab onto the train car that interrupts the beam of the infrared LED. The track assembly has four of these circuits, corresponding to each individual coil. The resulting assembly is a little bit messy, but that's okay since it's just going to be the prototype. Let's see if it works. Alright, that actually turned out better than I expected. Now let's move on to the full-scale version. The full-scale train will have 10 coils on a 14-inch diameter track that will encircle a tabletop Christmas tree. This design is a little bit cleaner than the prototype because I have a box for the circuit board, and large cavities in the track supports will allow me to bury part of the optical sensors and excess wiring. Alright, let's get to building. Probably the most tedious part of this project, aside from the wiring, was installing the magnets on the track. There's 60 permanent magnets total, and they have to be pushed in pretty hard to stay on the track, but if you do it wrong, sometimes they'll pop out and snap to the neighboring magnet, which can cause a real mess if they already have glue on them. Here's a piece of the track support. The large number of grooves are there for cable management. They allow wires to run underneath the track support while keeping it flush with the surface. This feature really came in handy for keeping the wiring clean. Here's the circuit board with the cabling attached to it. There's one MOSFET for each of the 10 coils, but I've also added these headers here. These are for indicator LEDs that will light up whenever their corresponding coil is energized. It's the same basic circuit as the prototype, but with an indicator LED being driven in addition to the coil. Then, the circuit is basically copied 10 times for each coil. 
I printed a box for the board with a hole for the cabling and placed the Christmas themed indicator LEDs on the rim of the box which the lid will go on top of. Then I printed these little brackets that would hold the screw terminals for the coil leads. These brackets will be glued into the grooves under the track support. One of the last things to do on the track before wiring was to glue in the optical sensors, which also attached to the track support through the wire grooves. After several hours of soldering and organizing cables, the wiring was almost complete. I just needed to test the sensor circuits and then place and connect the coils. As you can see, the indicator LEDs illuminate whenever my finger passes over the sensor, meaning the circuit is working because the coils share the same MOSFET as the indicator lights. Coil placement relative to the sensors will require a little bit of fine tuning. If the train magnet is directly over the coil when it activates, it won't move the car forward but just cause its back to jump upward, possibly jamming its nose on the track. If the train magnet is too far forward when the coil activates, the field lines will be pointing in the opposite direction and actually cause the train's backside to be pulled down onto the track. It seemed like the sweet spot was in between these two positions where the field lines of the coil were approximately horizontal, which in turn seemed to cause a mostly horizontal force on the train's magnet. So here's the track with all the coils set in place and wired up. Next, I have to build the train itself. I also decided while I was painting things, I'd go ahead and add a little bit of artistic flair to the circuit board cover, so I added this little Christmas village scene to the top of it. Alright, let's test it out. Well, it kind of works, but the train is pretty unstable. It bobs around a lot and tends to get hung up. I tried running the track at a higher voltage to get more force out of coils, but that actually ended up making the train even more unstable, so I think I need to change the design a little bit. Here's the original design for the lower half of the train. And here's the improved design. The train tended to lean hard to the right, so I added more material on the left to balance it out. I also made the legs longer and stretch farther down. Alright, let's give it a go and see if there's any improvement. This time it was pretty much perfect. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a Merry Christmas.